Good afternoon and welcome to Micro Teaching. This is part two of our sequence of videos on British public health between 1800 and 1914. And the question we're looking at today is this one. Why were there growing demands for public health reform between the 1850s and 1867? We've got two focus questions. Let's have a quick look. Number one, why did public health begin to improve? And number two, why was there still resistance to the demands for reform? We're going to start with cholera. If you watch my first video, you will already know that cholera was a particularly feared disease at this time. It causes death through dehydration, causing you to vomit and have diarrhoea until you don't have enough fluid left in your body to live. It was particularly feared because it struck all social classes, rich and poor, because it's caused by dirty water, and at this time, many rich people were drinking the same water as poor people were. 1831, 1848, 1853 and 1866, we see mass cholera epidemics in Britain, which means thousands and thousands of people dying at once from this disease in Britain's industrial cities. Now this causes a desire to find out what's really causing this disease so people can avoid catching it. And rising to this challenge is someone called John Snow. John Snow plots all the deaths in a particular cholera outbreak one which takes place in 1854, and realises that they are all clustered around the Broad Street pump. His careful scientific methods prove, beyond all doubt, that it is the dirty water causing the cholera and nothing else. And he's further proved right when he removes the handle from the pump and all the deaths stop. This creates demand to clean up the water. Also creating the desire to clean up the water is the Great Stink of 1858. Now, partially because of Chadwick's first Public Health Act and partly because of people's own existing belief in miasma, bad smells causing disease, for years and years, the people of London have been dumping all their sewage, their rubbish, their waste in the River Thames. In 1858, this all comes to a head, when in the summer, the entire river begins to rot. The stench is unimaginable, so bad that the Houses of Parliament have to close and rich people flee en masse, running from London because it's just too disgusting to live in. This creates a desire from the rich people to clean up the River Thames. Remember, at this time, it was the rich people who had all the power. It's for this reason that Bazalgette's sewers are implemented. He proposed these in 1840, but was ignored because they were regarded as being too expensive. But now, because of the great stink, the rich people say, go ahead, get our river sorted. And for the first time, this means that London's dirty water is being flushed out into the sea and not back into the River Thames from which people drink. The result? Better health. Even more important, in the 1860s and 1870s, two scientists, one French, Pasteur, one German, Koch, prove beyond all reasonable doubt that it is germs that cause disease. They do this through careful scientific methodology. This is incredibly important because it means that no longer will people blame things that are wrong. No longer will people be saying it's the poor's poor moral behaviour. No longer will people be saying it's miasma. And no longer will people be blaming God, the spirits, the four humours, the channel theory or anything else. Now given all this, you'll be forgiven for thinking, well that's the beginning of the end. Britain's government will get involved and clean up the cities immediately and improve conditions for everybody, even the poor. But they don't. And here's why. Remember, at this time, the government is made up of rich people. And they've got this belief, laissez-faire, you need to know that. It's a fancy French word for leave things alone. And it means the government didn't regard it as their job to clean up cities. They thought these should just be left alone and people, if they wanted to clean up, should do it themselves. Conven conveniently for the rich people, who were also paying the most taxes, it meant they didn't have to pay for it either. Things are beginning to change though. Only a generation before in France, Thousands and thousands and thousands of rich people were killed by poor people who rose up in revolution against them. Many killed, being executed by the guillotine. One of the reasons for this was that the rich people didn't listen to the poor. And this makes British politicians start to think they should do things to listen to poor people to avoid a similar fate happening to them. It's partially because of this that in 1867, the Great Reform Act happens. The Great Reform Act is the first time that poor men are allowed to vote. And this is extremely important because it means the British government has got to start listening to them for the first time. Because if they don't, those poor people will vote for something else and the government will lose its power. And that's why we've got this man here saying, improve conditions or we won't vote for you. Dead simple. We're all done. Review the focus questions. Number one, why did public health begin to improve? 
go through all the reasons in sequence. Number two, why was there still resistance to reform? That's this part of the diagram here. Remember to use that word, laissez-faire. As is the source paper, you also need to learn all these dates. Thank you very much for listening. More videos to follow.